story time with cranky cameraman on the road again on my way to the Dallas area I got called in um, to cover for somebody phone call was yesterday afternoon hey pack your bags get in the truck we need you to cover I'll get into that in a moment welcome to my YouTube channel I'm an independent director of photography I've been uh, working in that role for about 22 years recently relocated from Southern California to Texas uh, continuing my business here in the great state of Texas and I started doing this YouTube channel as a way to give back to the freelance film crew and media community um, share some of the experiences and stories that uh, I've accumulated over the years and really this is nothing more than the conversations I've had with my peers and crewmates and clients when sitting in the truck and in airports traveling around from day rate to day rate so I'm driving up to the Dallas area last minute I'm a backup contingency plan I'm filling a very small role in a large production um, they're doing COVID testing at the door every morning and um, one person in a unit tested positive possible false positive they did a second test similar I guess I don't know all the details so there are four or five people in that little production unit that uh, have been quarantined they're all testing negative except for one uh, so I'm going up as a backup plan to cover for today and possibly the next several days um, I have to stop and get a PCR test which is more involved in the nasal swab they're doing at the door um, and then the, I, I guess whomever tested positive also needs to do the PCR test and if they come through negative on that I think I just get released at that point but if they are positive I'm gonna be working for a few days I don't know it's so nutty every every project is a different kind of variation on this compliance stuff uh, last shoot kind of wore me down to the point where it's like all right I think I'm done for the year I'm just gonna chill for the rest of November and December uh, got enough invoices out accounts payable uh, accounts receivable in the pipeline I'm just gonna chill until next year I'm, I'm tired of the freaking mass the temperature checks the progressively more restricted and liability shift in waivers and contracts to the individual over the hiring party um, I'm just done I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm not in fear of getting sick or not getting sick or I, I, and I've lost the tolerance for the well someone else's grandma could get sick because you're not doing everything uh, we've decided that you need to do today it's different than yesterday all right so I got my start in this crazy business in high school I lived in the state of New Hampshire went to high school in southern New Hampshire and my senior year of high school was a presidential primary and uh, the state of New Hampshire has the first primary in the United States for presidential elections. So at the time, uh, President Clinton was the incumbent. He's running for a second term. I was involved in the TV program at my high school. We had a studio. I was actually producing a little 30-minute um, news program that would run on local cable in our community through the high school. And then I also worked, uh, actually, let me clarify that. I volunteered for the city, City Hall, um, in the government access cable channel. So we would basically telecast all of the city government meetings. And then I learned very quickly, I started doing this um, actually when I was in the eighth grade. I was still in junior high. Um, started volunteering for the city and learned very quickly that the opportunity to make money earn an income in media is by volunteering in your local government because what would happen is I was like the, the the video kid I would off a camera on a live switch at a city hall meeting and I got to know all the town council members the mayor um, other elected officials the chief of police and in most of those cases each of those elected officials in our small community was about 30,000 residents um, were a small business owner, an attorney, you know, there's some kind of successful 
business person in the community. So when they would run for re-election, or if they had a particular topic or agenda they were interested in, they would self-fund and throw their own money at you know campaigning, creating video content to air on local television. So because I was volunteering, I would get hired to go shoot, edit, and produce content for people running for office. My senior year in high school was like my fifth year being involved with the city and uh, presidential primaries. So suddenly I was thrown into the national platform of being able to cover speeches, sit down interviews, media events for uh, many elected officials that were running for uh, president. And I covered a, a town hall meeting with President Clinton and Newt Gingrich. Uh, it was an exterior event. All the national media were there covering it as well as local. Uh, as a high school kid with a beta cam, I imagine things have changed a lot post 9-11, but uh, at the time, I'm trying to remember, I had to go in and apply for my press credential for the event. I think it was the day before, like 24 hours prior. I went up there with my dad. My dad helped me uh, cover the event, carry sticks, tripod, batteries, act as my producer. Um, and yeah, I, I think, I don't even remember. I must have been a driver's license and I had to have uh, like a credential. And I had one from the city to show, you know, what media or government uh, operation I represented. And uh, boom, get your credential, and then um, on the day of the event, you you know it's like Secret Service screen, the dogs, guys in suits with guns, uh, you know metal detector, and then um, you set up your kit, and then we would leave. We left the area. They do a sweep, and then you're back and in. But it's kind of cool. Got to watch lighting crew set up 18Ks on the roof, uh, security officials, uh, military set up in different points around the area, working security. Um, I don't know, there were so many different agencies. New Hampshire, you know, we had state troopers, sheriff's office, city police. I think there were capital police there because of uh, Newt Gingrich was there, Speaker of the House at the time, and then, you know, Secret Service for uh, the president. I thought it was pretty neat as I went in there thinking all of the different national media outlets would be cutthroat and competitive, trying to, you know, they're all competing for the sound bite, the best angle, the, you know, the ideal position. And it was quite the opposite. Everyone worked together. Um, you know, we, we loaned a battery to one of the Boston TV stations. Actually, it was a radio station. I don't know, something happened. His battery went down at a critical moment. We had spares. And uh, there was a lot of that going on between the different media outlets. You know, everyone, uh, you know, it wasn't really a competitive environment. It was more of uh, colleagues helping each other out. And uh, as I've learned over the years, I guess the unfortunate outcome of that is uh, what you're seeing now, which is very much a, a single message of coverage on a particular topic. And maybe that's always been the case. I don't know. So being a dumb, inexperienced high school kid, you make mistakes, right? So I'm handheld shooting B-roll of President Clinton. He's walking around shaking hands post-event. Uh, and, uh, you know, people are swarming to shake hands and do that whole thing. And I don't know, I'm probably eight feet away. Hopefully I can find the footage of this and throw it up. So my shot gets blocked by a head or something. So there's a chair, folding chair right there. Uh, I stand up on the chair with the camera on my shoulder to kind of get over. And again, I'm like maybe eight feet away. And this Secret Service agent it just shoots me a look. And, and just like a one second look says so much. Like right, just like, what the F are you doing, kid? Get down. <laughs> you know, just with his look. He didn't say anything to me, but like message received, yes sir. I'll get out of the way now. I'll leave you with this final observation. I was having this conversation with Nick back in California. Each presidential election post November 3rd, I've had a slowdown in work for usually January, February, March, somewhere in there. It goes slow or dead um, each time. Clinton's re-election, I was still a high school kid, so I don't know, I, I can't, I was, I was around and sort of working, but a call, uh, high school and then college student for that. Clinton to Bush, 
slow for me. Bush to Obama, slow. Obama re-election, very slow. And I have the calendar data. I couldn't remember 2016, Trump's election. Uh, but I got it in my calendar here. I'll throw up the days, the shoot days worked. No effect, I was crushing it, super busy, none of it political, but just the advertising, broadcast sports, corporate video production frenzy charged right through 2016, 17, 18, 19. Um, phenomenal business run right up until this wonderful year of 2020. Moved to Texas beginning of August 2020. Had I stayed in California, I would be working steadily crazy busy just like that 2016 end of year um, because i moved to texas it's been light but i'm working enough uh, however i so post election now mid-november uh, i had a, a travel job to a northeast state that's pushed and pushed and now canceled my next job was in a southern state travel work uh, but our talent is it in his 80s and it sounds to me like that's delaying due to health concerns totally justifiable i get it and now this job i'm driving to like i said is is directly the result of a, a COVID issue it, and my next confirmed travel job is in december it's a week in arkansas however i'm not too confident it's going to happen now that the uh you know the covid post-election situation that we're in i think um I don't know, I like to be proven wrong, but I think I'm gonna be pretty slow and chill and I'm fine with that uh, for the next couple months. That's it for today. My thoughts from behind the wheel. Thanks for watching and um, I'll come up with something to publish next week. Thank you very much, Gordon, for that very gracious introduction. And thank all of you for coming out on a Saturday morning to discuss something that is going to change America. Like a screen